Welcome, everyone. Our talk is how to reach more gamers through the Microsoft Game Accessibility Testing Service, otherwise known as MGATS. My name is Anita Mortaloni. I'm the director of a gaming accessibility here at Microsoft and use she, her pronouns. Today, I have with me Brandon Zahand, Senior Program Manager on the Gaming Accessibility Team. Hey, all. Great to be here. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm also a part of the gaming and disability community. Brandon will be telling you more about our game, Microsoft Game Accessibility Testing Service in a minute, but let me start by giving you an overview of our agenda. Today, we will walk through our mission at Xbox, some fast facts about gaming and disability, and a program overview of the Microsoft Game Accessibility Testing Service, including logistics and reporting. We will also share with you more about the Xbox accessibility guidelines and accessibility feature tags, then close out with a few next steps. Let's get started. Our mission here at Xbox is to empower every gamer on the planet to achieve more. We know that play is a fundamental human need, not for some, but for all. Here at Xbox, we strive to make life more fun for billions of people around the world by creating gaming experiences that everyone can enjoy. Because when everyone can play, we all win. But who is everyone, especially in the context of gaming and disability? It's a question that comes up a lot. So let me share a few fast facts about gaming and disability to put it into perspective on why it is so critical to include accessibility in game creation and what audience you can reach. There are over 1 billion people that live with some form of disability, and almost everyone is likely to experience some form of disability, temporary or permanent, at some point in their life. An example of a permanent disability could be a newfound need for use of reading glasses. An example of a temporary disability could include blurry vision after eye surgery or limited mobility after breaking your wrist and unable to use two hands on a standard controller. There are also situational circumstances like bright sunlight, not something we see a lot here in Seattle in the winter, that could make it hard to view your phone or it could be your controller with a stuck button, or trying to game in a room with someone else sleeping. In these situational circumstances, features like button remapping or captions are really helpful. Overall, we have seen that the number of people with disabilities is dramatically increasing due to demographic trends and the increasing chronic health conditions. So how does that translate into numbers, and why is accessibility so important for reaching more gamers? Microsoft estimates that there are approximately 429 million gamers with disabilities worldwide, and Xbox user research estimates that approximately 23% of Xbox gamers have a disability. So how can you ensure that your game meets the needs of your audience? Let me transition over to Brandon to share details of the Microsoft Game Accessibility Testing Service program now. MGATS is an optional paid testing service for developers and publishers of Xbox and PC games. It started just a year ago when we received a request from a major game developer in the industry asking if we could help them review their products to improve the accessibility. They were passionate about taking their products from being simply good to really amazing experiences for gamers with disabilities, but weren't quite sure where to begin. Thus, we set out to create a program that brought together the subject matter expertise of the gaming accessibility team, the testing skill and scalability of the Xbox game reliability engineering team, and, most importantly, passionate gamers with disabilities and their lived experiences. Since the creation of the program, we've tested well over 100 titles and provided thousands of pages of feedback, with reports often topping over 100 pages each. And during the process, we've continued to receive very positive feedback on the service itself, both from game developers utilizing the service and from customers who are receiving more accessible content because of the results this testing has driven. It's clear that whether you are just starting out on your studio's game accessibility journey or are already well down that road, the MGATS program can help you create inclusive, accessible gaming experiences. So how does it work? Well, first, we need a game. In MGATS, we can test games that are both in a pre-release or post-release state. 
Now, we strongly encourage developers who wish to utilize the service to submit their products for testing as early in the development lifecycle as feasible, usually when they have their first relatively stable vertical slice ready. However, we do realize that a lot of games run as services and may be updated for years after they are released. Those titles may want to make some accessibility improvements so that uh, they can provide a better experience for their community. We can accommodate that. In fact, even if a game isn't going to be updated, some developers have asked us to test so they can take learnings from the program and bring them into the next title in the series that may be in the earliest stages of development. It's important to note that any time pre-release software is involved, security and confidentiality is going to be top of mind for developers and publishers, especially if that content hasn't been announced. As such, we use the same processes and security procedures in MGATS that we do for the Xbox certification program, which includes all testing occurring on-site in highly secured test labs with strict access requirements and vetted testers under non-disclosure agreements. Each test we run on a game is performed by accessibility subject matter experts as well as members of the gaming and disability community. This is important because we believe strongly that the lived experiences of gamers with disabilities can't be replaced. There is no substitute for members of our community sharing how their disabilities impact specific gameplay experiences. So every test pass includes coverages from gamers with a variety of backgrounds and disabilities. During our testing, our team uses the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, otherwise known as ZAGs, as a set of test cases to direct testing. For those who aren't familiar with the ZAGs, let me briefly explain what they are and their purpose. The Xbox Accessibility Guidelines are a set of best practices that have been developed in partnership with industry experts and members of the gaming and disability community. They were first released in January of 2020 and have been updated multiple times since then as Microsoft has learned more on our own accessibility journey. These guidelines are intended for designers as a catalyst for generating ideas, for developers as guardrails when developing their games, and for test teams as a checklist to validate the accessibility of their titles. The ZAGs aren't intended to act as a checklist to validate any type of compliance or legal requirements. Rather, they seek to ensure that the user experience in a game is enjoyable and playable for everyone. Each ZAG has a goal, overview, scoping questions, implementation guidelines, applicable gaming and disability personas, and links to relevant tools and resources. Some ZAGs also provide background and foundational information as well as key areas to target. Example images and video captures are also featured within the ZAGs to demonstrate what proper implementation of a particular accessibility guideline can look like. These examples are taken from both first and third party games that do a great job of demonstrating key accessibility principles. So, as a quick aside, if you see a ZAG that one of your games does a great job of showcasing, please let us know. We'd love to highlight it. So again, each game is run against a set of test cases based on the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines by gamers with disabilities and accessibility subject matter experts. Based on that testing, a very thorough report is generated that includes a number of key sections. First, we start with accessibility highlights. It's always great to start on a positive note, and we love to celebrate the hard work of games uh, that have already put in a ton of effort to make the experience more inclusive. And even for developers who are only starting to think about making accessibility a priority, you'd be surprised how often they include features in their products without even realizing they are accessibility features. As an example, many folks don't realize things like being able to invert camera controls or pause game cinematics actually can be helpful for gamers with disabilities. Next, we list out all the concerns we find. Now, these, case, these are cases where aspects of the Xbox accessibility guidelines aren't followed. We're careful to use the term concerns here, because while these are written up in a very bug-like fashion, the word bug implies a lack of adherence to an expected design. In many cases, the issues we are finding are behaving exactly as designed. So that's why we refer to them as concerns, because even though they may be intentional, game behaviors or mechanics, they can still pose challenges for gamers with disabilities. Now, each of these concerns is logged, including the observed behavior, reproduction steps, 
what we would suggest the behavior actually look like, as well as the types of players with disabilities who might be impacted. We also include screenshots and videos, as well as information on relevant ZAGs and the severity of the concern based on the level of impact the behavior could have on players. Now, while we do all of this testing against the ZAGs, we also realize that test cases alone can't catch every accessibility issue a product may have. This is why it's so important that we include gamers with disabilities in our testing program, and we dedicate an entire section of our report to giving them an ability to rate key aspects of the product from their perspective as a gamer from a specific disability persona, as well as an opportunity to include free form feedback about how the game experiences they encountered impacted them directly. Next, we add a regularly updated list of additional accessibility resources to help game developers as they continue on their accessibility journey. Over two pages are dedicated to not only our accessibility resources available to publishers and developers, but to third-party resources as well, including those from partners, competitors, nonprofits, and more. There's information on gaming accessibility events in the industry, quick facts on gaming and disability, and a variety of tools that can be used to build and test accessible products. Finally, we just recently added a new section to our reports, which informs game developers which accessibility feature tags their product qualifies for, as well as what can be done to adjust their product to qualify for additional tags. Now, as the accessibility feature tags are relatively new, let me take just a few minutes to explain what they are so you have a better understanding of why this section of our report is so important for your titles. So since beginning my work on game accessibility in 2006, the most common question I've received from gamers with disabilities has been, what games can I play? This is because gamers with disabilities often don't know before they buy a game whether they're gonna actually be able to play it as there may be game UI or mechanics that present unexpected, unintentional, and unavoidable barriers to participating. So, in early November of last year, we globally launched new store functionality aimed at addressing this issue. Thanks to the efforts of a myriad of teams across Xbox and feedback from over 80,000 members of our Xbox Accessibility Insider League, Players can now determine whether a game has one or more of 20 common accessibility features as determined by extensive community feedback and research. This functionality is called accessibility feature tags. From a new accessibility spotlight page, players can find products that have been tagged by developers as having multiple capabilities, including spatial audio, input remapping, narrated game menus, on-demand tutorials, and more. Players can also search the store for games with specific tags. Each of these features is validated by our game reliability engineering team against a strict set of criteria that aims to ensure games meet an aspirational quality bar and provide a consistent experience for our community. Additionally, accessibility feature tags can be found by going directly into the product details page of games in a variety of storefronts, including the Xbox Store, Mobile Game Pass app, PC Xbox app, and Xbox.com. Let's quickly step through the experience on the Xbox Store. Here, you can see the link to our permanent Accessibility Spotlight page, accessed from the main page of the Xbox Store. Clicking on it takes us to that list of titles with multiple tags. Right now, there are over 100 products listed. Those with the most tags are sorted to the top of the list. Clicking into a product with accessibility tags, either from the Spotlight page or elsewhere in the store, will bring up the product details page for the title. At the top, the number of accessibility features that the title has are listed. Users can find more information on these tags by viewing the Accessibility Details pane, which shows tags broken up into four categories, gameplay, audio, visual, and input. By diving in, users can see exactly which accessibility features the game has been tagged as having. In this case, the title in question has four input tags, full keyboard support, no button holds, single stick gameplay, and text-to-speech, speech-to-text -to -text communications. So accessibility feature tags are a fantastic way to spotlight the work your team has put into making your products more accessible for gamers with disabilities. But 
Perhaps more importantly, they allow gamers who need accessibility features or simply just use them to enhance their gaming experience to easily find your content. That can lead to additional sales. That's why in the MGATS program, we take the time to look over your experience and compare it to the criteria for each accessibility feature tag. If you qualify for one or more, we'll let you know so you can publish that information along with your product's catalog listing. And for those you don't qualify for, we'll explain exactly what improvements you can make so you can tag your product with those features and draw even more gamers to your product. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about accessibility feature tags, you might consider watching Maddie Wisenant's talk titled, Help Your Game Get Discovered with Better Metadata after our presentation today. So, stepping back a bit, we've talked a lot about reports and all the information included in them. Let's talk a little bit about some of the logistics. Generally speaking, we can turn a report around within seven business days of receiving a title. We want your teams to be able to get this information back as quickly as possible so you can dive into the material and begin planning how you're going to tackle the feedback contained within it. Once you've received the report, we'd also encourage you to take advantage of one of the perks of participating in this program, which is going through your report with one of the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Team's subject matter experts. It's a great opportunity to ask questions about feedback, brainstorm on solutions, learn about additional tools and resources that might be available to assist you in your journey, and more. Additionally, it's a fantastic opportunity for our team to take your feedback on the service so we can continue to improve the program. With regards to costs, this is an optional program. So in an effort to keep costs as low as possible for developers and publishers, we've broken our test offerings into two categories. Standard testing is for games that have a single game mode and no multiplayer communications. Advanced testing is for games that have multiple game modes and or multiplayer communications. Regional costs for each type of testing can be obtained by contacting your Microsoft Partner Manager. Finally, because this has been asked of me a few times, I want to note that even this, though this program takes advantage of many of the uh, great aspects of the Xbox certification program, such as quick, secure testing, the results of this program have absolutely no impact on your product certification status. Implementing any feedback or addressing any concerns found in our reports is completely at your discretion and will not affect certification of your title. Well, that's it for me. I'm going to turn it back over to Anita to close things out. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. In closing, we have a short summary of ideas from today's session. First, to utilize the Microsoft Game Accessibility Testing Service, please contact your partner manager. And if you have questions about accessibility or questions regarding an MGATS report, reach out to xpaq at microsoft.com. Please send us your feedback. We want this program to meet your needs and can only do that if you tell us how to make it better. Second, as a reminder, the MGATS program does not replace the close partnership with the gaming and disability community. There is a saying, nothing for us without us and we encourage you to actively engage with the disability community throughout the entire process. And lastly, don't forget about our other game accessibility resources. First, the Gaming Accessibility Fundamentals Learning Path, a free course that introduces what gaming accessibility is, how to partner with the community, and an introduction to accessibility in gaming hardware, software, and games. Second, the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, a set of best practices that have been developed in partnership with industry experts and members of the gaming and disability community. Third, the Gaming and Disability Player Experience Guide, a supplemental resource to the Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, intended to help game developers gain a more holistic understanding of the barriers that players with disabilities may face. Then the accessibility feature tags, a set of 20 individual criteria that a game can meet and be tagged with to make it easier for players to go find games that have features they need. And lastly, the Xbox Accessibility Insider League. It's a public group that gives players the opportunity to provide feedback on the accessibility of a range of content provided by developers. All of these can be found at aka.ms forward slash XGA. 
In closing, we want to thank you for your commitment and interest in empowering every gamer on the planet to achieve more by making our gaming experiences more accessible. So with that, we want to say thank you on behalf of the gaming and disability community and the Microsoft Gaming Accessibility Team. We are looking forward to partnering with you in the future. Thank you.